the, the big go in the building. Man, thanks, bro. Thanks for having me. Now, before we get into it, too, I got to say one thing. I always pride myself on having a good hoodie sweatshirt collection, but you got some of the craziest ones. <laughs> no, you, you and my guy, Icewear Vezo, really put me on to rock and hair and Preston, too. Hair and Preston. I love that hoodie. I yeah. love that. And they make quality shit, man. Yeah. Like everything from them is just ever since I've been um I've been seeing their stuff since what 2018, maybe 2017, just pure quality. So I, I love and I love a good sturdy hoodie too. Like you could just tell that's like a just a you know durable hoodie. Yeah, no, this one's perfect. And yeah, I gotta agree with that for sure. Cause there's nothing worse than when you bring out some bread for a hoodie or whatever and you wash it a few times and it's been six months and it just feels way different than when you first oh, yeah, yeah. these my hoodies last me i'm a hoodie guy like you just said yeah so I, I, I keep them shoot they last me like two three years that's yeah that's how you want it to be but no i, I had to um i definitely had to give you that shout out for sure because I, I consider <laughs> myself big on the hoodie game but you and you and Ice were the first too. I remember I called Bezo. I was like, "This the brand right here." And he's like, "Bro, if you haven't got one yet, you gotta get it. You gotta get it." He had this <laughs> white. He had this some white. He pulled up some the same day. I bought it black. Yeah, yeah, he's mad cool, right? Super cool. Yeah, yeah. I like Bezo and that uh that Detroit scene is crazy, but yeah, like I said, we got the hoodie god in the building, the big <laughs> goat G Rai. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, bro. I'm uh, just chilling. I'm at my crib right now, drinking some uh, some tea, and uh, I'm kind of excited for the Roddy album coming out in like two hours. Got one on there, so I'm just waiting for that to drop. Yeah, Roddy, Roddy's album is going to be crazy. I can't wait to see what it does first week. Man, same, bro, same. I'm excited. We're definitely going to see, but um, yeah, you've had, there's too much to cover in this one. You've had so much craziness happening in the last five years, last two years, last 12, 14 months specifically. And I'm sure 2022 is looking like it's going to hit super fast. I mean, these days, like what, what does an average day in the life of G-Rai looking like? Is it just nonstop all the time or you try to like put yeah. time aside for you? Um, first of all, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, but a uh, regular day, I have a, I have this routine that I'm just like in love with. Um, so I was living in downtown LA before, but now I moved out to the Valley. Um, and the Valley is just different. It's a residential area. So it's calmer, it's, it's slower, it's quieter. Um, so what I do, I wish I was a morning person. I really wish I was a person that woke up like eight, nine in the morning, even 10 but I'm the guy that wakes up at 11, 45, 12. And Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I have to be at the gym at 12 o'clock. So <laughs> I'll wake up like 1130 at the earliest and um, get out of bed, go to the gym, spend a couple hours there because, you know, trying to get trying to get right for 2022. And um, once I'm done at the gym, come back home. I eat, I um, shower up, and I got my studio here at the crib, and it was kind of like the whole point of me moving is to, like, have a room to build a studio in, but I don't know what it is about the actual studio that I just love going to, and it's also, like, I need to get out the house, so um, I'll go to the studio, like, when I'm done eating and take care of my, my uh, things around the house. I'll go to the studio. So sometimes the studio will be available right away. Sometimes it'll be a seven o'clock till, you know, three, four in the morning type thing. You, um, have you noticed, I'm in the same boat. I try so hard to like, I have people texting me at 6.30 AM and whatever. And I'm just like, that's gotta be like a cheat code to just be up early. So you have so much extra time, but I'm always staying up so late talking to like, producers I work with overseas or whatever and I hate when I wake up at like nine or something and have so many texts I wish I could have been up for when they were coming but um, 
do you notice like a big difference? Cause there was probably a point in your life where you didn't have as much of a routine, a point of your career rather. Are you noticing like a big difference when it comes to that? And like things have changed a lot. Yeah. Um, the differences I'm feeling, uh, just as of recently, I'm feeling, uh, and I should have probably did this a long time ago, but 2022, I'm going to, I'm going to implement this. Um, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Like I'm lately, I've been feeling overwhelmed with just the amount of stuff that gets thrown my way and like in my phone and stuff. So I'm going to get an assistant for the new year. So I don't have to like, really like think about, you know, just, you know, a bunch of like scheduling. I don't like scheduling myself, but I find myself doing that because people just hit me direct. Um, so, and, and my team does that too, but people just hit me direct. So I hit them back, but uh, you know, 2022, I'm going to get an assistant. Uh, so I don't feel so overwhelmed. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. That's why I loved how we did this. Like it was supposed to be right. such a good time or whatever. I was like, so I'm just going to text bro the link when I'm, when I'm good to go. And hopefully he's going around the same time. Cause I hate like, it's part of being professional and everything, but I hate when it's like Sunday and someone's like, so about what time are you thinking for Friday? I'm like, bro, I can't even think about tomorrow. Oh, right yeah, now. man. No, bro. I can't. Uh, and man, and I want to apologize to like all my producer homies, all my artist homies, all my homies in general, because like people think I'm probably like an asshole because I tried telling this to someone else. Um, like when people ask to like get in, get in and, and work and stuff. And like, they're like, Oh, does, uh, the day like later on this week work I'll just say yeah just because but I know it's 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 a fail because that day's gonna come around and something else is gonna come up and I'm gonna have to cancel on that person or I'm gonna have to make other arrangements um so yeah I can't plan for anything except for today and maybe tomorrow yeah yeah I know because it's just in LA with Living in LA, there's always something going on. There's always a, an occasion. There's always a celebration. There's always um, someone's birthday or a release party or a session. It's just there's just too much things going on. I'm so guilty of that. And yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily like the polite thing to do to just say yeah when you don't really know. But I I do it every time, and then people are like, yeah. So I try to avoid that. I try to I try to avoid that. Yeah. But yeah, going into the new year, trying to, trying to, trying to get that settled and squared away. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's it's really cool to kind of look into like the the day to day to what you got going on now. Like I said, it's been so much as of the recent past and the past couple of years, and really just looking at it from all the way in. But I guess for you, like, how did music wise all kind of start off for you? Like, where are you from? Have you always been like a musical? kid when you were growing up um yeah like how did that kind of start off um I want to say yeah even though the answer is no but only yeah because um growing up I was just so into hip-hop and hip-hop culture and just you know like when I was in high school or even like junior high like I used to dance in front of the whole school I was like this little kid I was like this big by the way and so uh, I looked like uh Taj Moy from Smart Guy like you know how he's a little kid in high school yeah that was me I was like literally that so like add that with a little bit of dancing and like I used to dance in front of the whole school no one knows this only my uh only my twin brother knows this and some friends from home but uh I used to dance in front of the whole school in junior high and in high school and music was just like I was always listening to music um even before I knew what like producing was I used to buy uh scratch magazines and just read those all the time and just like I used to be obsessed with just like um the nuances of like behind the scenes of music so uh but honestly I didn't really apply that to anything until um I was like 19 or 20 and I met um Hit Boy and my boy Chase and Cash one of my best friends um and when I saw them producing on uh Fruity Loops um, on like a PC, like I was like blown away because they had just um, just got into the music industry. They had just signed a publishing deal with Poe the Dawn and they're already doing big stuff at the time. They're doing like Pussycat Dolls, G-Unit, freaking J-Lo, but Hit Boy was from uh, Fontana and I was living in Riverside. 
So that's about 10, 15 minutes away. So once I, you know, met them and they let me come over every day. And once I started being around them and realized, yo, like, this is crazy. You could actually do this. I was like instantly like inspired and like motivated. And I just try to be like them. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Cause even like what you said with just reading the scratch magazine stuff and things like that, like I was having a conversation with someone the other day and I was kind of like that same type of person, like how I really started putting myself onto the producer world was through like basketball hoop mixtapes. And then I would always figure out, cause they always had the craziest beats, beat instrumentals in the background. So I'd track them down on sound click or whatever and like figure out who did it. But yeah. Back then, I was like making it my job to know all this information, but not doing anything with it. But then now, like come full circle, you're obviously accoladed like crazy. And I got what I got going on. But I was talking to someone, they were like, isn't it weird? It's almost like you've been training for this your whole life, even though you didn't even know it. Yeah. And then even too back then, um, the music industry was way more closed off. Like there wasn't. Um, and I think it was an older person's game, too. And uh, obviously with the with technology not being so advanced back then, it was just so closed off. So there wasn't really anything to get into if you weren't actually like hands on making music or trying to rap or sing at the time. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because there's the social media and everything has opened up like so many different outlets like I'm so surprised that. I'm not surprised now, but I was at first when I asked people like how they got their foot in the door here or there or whatever. And it was like, I locked in with so-and-so on Instagram or in Twitter back in the day or whatever. Yeah. There's so many stories for that. And there's so many beat placement stories from that now with, you know, loop makers sending stuff or whatever. Um, so it also speaks to just like genuine relationships too. Cause I think everyone wants to be like, uh, you were a hip boy now, but you guys were locked in just on some friendship shit before you even had any type of production background at all. For sure. For sure. That's like the uh, foundation of uh, our relationship first, first and foremost. Um, and like, even before that, like, like him and my boy, Chase and Cash, I mentioned in my eyes, they were like the goats. They were like the gurus. So like, I didn't at all try to even attempt to like, you know, get on anything musical with them because, like, that was just so far-fetched to me. Um, so just them letting me be, like, a little homie to them and be around and soak up, uh, you know, game and information, that was enough for me. But eventually, yeah, they, uh, they, you know, I earned their respect and, you know, you see what it is today. Yeah, it's definitely started taking off. So at what point do you remember like the day or like the moment or whatever, where it sounds like you were kind of just around on some homie shit while they're cooking up and you're just chilling or whatever. What's the point where you kind of jumped in and was like, let me, let me give this, let me, let me test this out and see what I could do. Oh man. There was points before that point. Um, <laughs> Cause uh, I was secretly trying to like, when I'd leave their house, I would, go back home and make beats on the on the FL studio that I had on my computer and practice and practice and practice. And even when I was spending time away from them, I was, you know, working on that. And when I did work up the courage to actually play my first beat for Chase, and it was terrible, by the way. It was terrible. So terrible. Um, you know, I had a lot of confidence, but anyways, I played it for him and he he roasted me down. He was laughing his ass off, but he did, you know, thankfully, uh, he gave me pointers. He was like, he gave me constructive criticism. He's like, yo, like, you should have did it like this. Don't do it like that. Like, and he kind of schooled me. So um, after about a year of that constant, you know, constantly being uh, schooled um, and, you know, I would say being chiseled, you know, they, you know, like, I was just always playing my stuff. So they were just like, oh, you're getting better. Oh, you are getting better. Okay. Like, oh, this is, this is dope. Like the first time I ever heard like, yo, this is hard. That's when I was like, oh, got it. Let's go. Yeah. That's what, man, I love that you even say it like that too. Cause I'm like, throughout these, I'm really trying to make people 
admitting that they sucked at first cool make people talk about studio sessions go wrong or the artist is saying skip 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 i don't know if that'll ever be cool but make it like normal because it's like bro everyone's going through this shit like you got people really bent out of shape about some of it like it's what's happening to everybody even from right level down you know what i'm saying yeah bro i was the i was the the trash the trash produce beat maker producer like that was just trying at first like it was it was laughable like like yeah like hip boy remembers like (laughs) he brought it up not too long ago like yo his first beats did not sound like that yeah it's insane that's insane so you said around the time you're 19 20 you start linking up with both of them kind of chilling and then throughout the next year and some change you're kind of like doing stuff on your own trying to show it to them and then doing playing more stuff for them etc at what point do you get like your very first placement or even before that, like your first work where there's like actually an artist attached to it on the other side. And it's not just you kind of doing whatever on your own. Um, yeah. It took like about a year of like proving myself with them. And the cool thing about that, um, is that, you know, hip boy and chase, they had this group called the surf club and it was very, very early on. And this is my space days. And um, they were a hit on MySpace, actually. They were, you know, it was like the heyday of MySpace. Uh, and so they had this group called The Surf Club, which was them as producers. They had one artist, Chili Chill. Um, so the cool thing about that, once they figured out that I had, you know, the, the sauce and I was, I was dope or whatever, I was like, okay, well, now produce for, for our surf club, uh, you know, homies and, oh, Chili Chill wants to be, let him have a beat, or we even, um, we're close friends with our, with our homies, I don't know if anyone knows him, but Audio Push, we're close friends with Audio Push, give Audio Push some beats, and we had other, like, uh, you know, producers and songwriters around us, like, that was the entry level, like, okay, you're nice, but now start feeding um, the click all your beats, so we could shape a sound, and so I did a lot of that, did a lot of you know, given audio push beats on their first projects, um, you know, our artists um, on Surf Club, uh, Shouts to Kept Money, he was another one. He did a song over one of my beats on his album that really like got people like, oh, damn, you're hard. So it was a lot of that. And it wasn't up until like um, Nipsey Hustle, like a, the Crenshaw mixtape with Nipsey Hustle, where I landed something on there that I got like a bigger, like I got on a bigger project. Yeah, that was, Nip- those Nipsey projects were crazy. Like uh, Crenshaw into the whole like process to how it all got built out was just insane. He was really, even like the old like Blue Laces days and things like that, like I yeah. know, high school days driving around looking at him like, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful to have lived in this era that he was that he was around. Yeah, most definitely. Because he's like even uh he's like the type of person too that's like it's like a mindset that he's leaving behind. Even even with like a Kobe too, like uh exactly that's exactly what I thought of too. The marathon, like mama mentality, like really like leaving behind like a like a belief system, like it's just crazy for sure. At that point, are you doing because now I think it's got to be basically everybody looking at you at somebody who is not just a beat on the other end of the song, like the actual person who's very much in the mix on the song creation process. Is that how it kind of started even back then? Or were you kind of just making beats, sending them off and people liking them? And it was, it was going like that. I was making beats, trying to send them off. Things weren't really like all the way open for me. I will say about Nip, the one thing about Nip was that he always let me pull up on him and play the beats for him. So that was really cool. And we shared, uh, we shared a bunch of dope moments during that time. Um, but no, it was just really just, and I'm surrounded at this time by like all these other songwriters, talented songwriters and producers and artists and stuff. But like things were not going my way at all, really. Like I was trying to play beats for people and like just that one song on the Crenshaw mixtape clicked, but 
everything else around me was not like nobody was it, it was still a struggle after that i'm not gonna lie to you yeah i think that's something important to normalize too because i think so many people get like one of two things happens when they have like this big moment that like garners them some attention they'll either think it's about to click and start just going crazy and it doesn't or they get overwhelmed about like living up to that moment and i mean i don't know if you felt like that at all but i mean it sounds like you just kind of kept your head down and just kept pushing but was there any kind of like strategy you did uh to combat that no bro not at all it was just it was a sink or swim to be all the way honest with you because it was it was a crazy time because like i said i thought stuff was just going to be on the up and up after that but it was just a lot more struggle really and um, we had gone through some things with the surf club that kind of like, you know, disbanded us for a little bit for a quick second. And man, to be all honest, I was back at my mom's house, like trying to figure it out. And just from being there and I was still struggling, that was the motivation. Like, yo, I got to get it some way, somehow. Like if, if, if like I had any more success, probably after that, probably wouldn't have made it because I would have been feeling myself. But no, nah, it was like the the instant struggle after that of not still not making it was just like that was the motivation. That was what was fueling me every day. Yeah, it's in, it's it's crazy to think about, and even just like so grateful for you, just kind of like sharing the flip side to it because everybody wants to just be the the hottest shit out big glasses on never touching on some of the shit that happened like that but that's the realest stuff that'll get you to that point I mean you know you end up having a little bit of success but then it doesn't really click or line up until that point that's another thing too for a lot of this stuff to like happen and actually come out there's so many things that have to just line up perfectly with like the artist feeling it the song being released this way a lot of times there's a lot of different different versions of songs as i'm sure you know super well but what's that moment where it actually like kind of lines up for you at that point and then you get back on the path that's just like acceleration um i would say when um me and party um got back into like working together and he put out party next door too and he used one of my beats on there. And, you know, he was like, that was like his first year out. You know what I'm saying? So it was like a, it was like a really big look for me. And then that's when people like, I wouldn't even say people, I, that's when I believe like, oh, this is going to like, this could happen. Like I have what it takes. Like I have the potential, like let's just keep going. Yeah, that that's another thing too. So it was like a thing of some like, what would you ask G Rai if you had the opportunity to? And there's just so many people wanting to know about like the the party link up. So, oh really? Okay. Yeah. How did that like ha happen in the very first place? Like, how did you guys initially link up, and then how did it translate to like a working relationship? Yeah. Um. So party, he was a singer, singer songwriter, and he was just going by his like regular name, like his real name, Charon, Charon B. And actually, he was working with Hip Boy before. before. And um, Hip Boy was doing these beat tapes he had put out. And then he put out a beat tape of like a Valentine's one. And at the end of the beat tape, there was a song on there. Um, it was like a Joe remake, like a Joe, a remake of a Joe song. And it was drawn. It was Party singing it. And then so that's kind of how I got familiar with him. And then one day, uh, Hip Boy like forwarded me an email um, that he sent to Hip Boy over a song over one of these beats that me and Hip Boy made. And Hip Boy, like he had me at the time, like, yo, check out that one song I just sent you. Shit's dope. I'm gonna um I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I could get it for uh, Jamie Foxx. Like, you know, it was like a demo. And you know, I was so excited to hear a song over one of my beats at the time. Um that you know, I just kept sending beats to that email, to Party's email. And we follow each other on uh, social media, on uh, Twitter. So we just kept going, like kept sending him beats and he kept sending me songs back because I was, uh, I was, my strong suit at the time was R&B, like slower beats. And no one else was gravitating to him. 
So once he, you know, did that song for RB, sent more, he sent back. I was like, oh, I fuck with this guy. Like he's on the same type of wave. Yeah. You guys have had countless like hits together, but it's it's always really cool and interesting. You're even speaking to a different lifetime where he's not even going by P and D at the time. And I think that's just something so important to just keep in keep in mind too, because you know, everybody now wants the Dirk placement or wants the money bag placement or wants the Rod Wave placement, but like that building up with the artists as they're on their way up and like being the groom and sound behind that, it always ends up being more valuable than just some passive placement when they're already up. Super valuable, bro. I think that's like one of the key things that if I didn't do that, I don't know where I'd be right now to be all to be honest with you. Yeah sick because that that was the foundation to everything was to start blowing up from there um so yeah it kind of goes from a little bit of success to knock down to things kind of like lining up with party you guys obviously go on on a pretty crazy spree at what point does it is it all kind of like from him and like different features and then it kind of like branches up to other artists or i'm sure you're putting in your own work on the side too and and it kind of like builds off on both sides yeah, it was a little bit of uh, all those things you just mentioned because um, as I'm, you know, working with him, um, I'm also trying to do more. So I'm also working with other artists, a couple other artists. Um, and really nothing else was like as big as the stuff that me and Barty were doing. So, you know, as I'm doing that, it wasn't until... Um, you know, he, he, Party was releasing albums. He did his, his uh, P3 album. We did some stuff on there. And it wasn't until uh, the Drake More Life project was like the bigger breakthrough, I would say. Because um, we did a song on there together, me and Party, that Drake hopped on. And um, at the same time, around that same time, Oliver had reached out to me and was like asking for beats so i was feeding him beats so i had ended up getting another song on more life um so that's how that happened yeah and that's we got we got to go into that too because you know that's the people want to talk about that's the people want to hear about because right. see, seeing you on that i've been kind of watching from the outside in for so long so seeing like that huge laugh now cry later moment to a lot of people was like such like a g rye smack in the face of like holy shit like bro's going crazy but they don't even realize that like more life placements scorpion stuff etc but yeah i mean what's it like and i've what's it like when like someone from the camp reaches out because i've had it happen a few times to different people and they're asking me like what do you think i should send back and this and that and everyone's getting so flustered but what's that initial initial moment like when like the camp starts to reach out and you're like damn this could really be something Man, if you really want to know, like, the real, um, what it was like was I was, uh, just to give you a little backdrop, like, yeah, we're doing all this stuff, like, we're, we're doing the party stuff and everything, but, like, um, and this just is, this is a testament to the way the music industry works, and it's really very, it's not fair, I wouldn't say, and it's hard, it's real, it's real difficult. We're doing these things, but, like, I'm not really making money like that, bro. To be, I'm not even making any money at that time, to be all the way honest with you. Because, I mean, if anyone knows how to get paid from a, from a record, it takes pulling a lot, of, a lot of teeth and pulling nails out. It's just not easy, number one. And then, two, it's just like you're not making anything valuable at the time, for real. You're not making, like, these big records. So I wasn't getting paid, bro. So I had this uh, job on the weekends at a call center um where i had to wake up like at five in the morning to get on the road to to go be there and yeah the party album came out and stuff and it was it was okay um i had one song on there i was going through it at the time um and so yeah i barely made that project by the skin of my teeth but this one song on there oliver liked it he had put it on a ovo sound radio a couple times and i noticed that i was like oh that's dope so as I'm driving to this dead end job on the weekend, um, I see a like a message on Twitter from Oliver. 
He was like, yo, send me a pack. And thankfully, like, I used to carry my uh, my beats on a little thumb drive with me everywhere. I don't know why I had them with me. But, uh, oh, it's because, you know, it was a job at a call center. I had a computer. So I'm, while I'm at the computer, I'm sending beats out, like, to whoever I fuck with or whoever I can fuck with. Um, so he happened to send me a DM on the way to work. He said, send me a pack. I was, like, 10, 15 minutes away from, from uh, work. As soon as I pulled in, I just went straight to the computer. I didn't do any small talk with anyone. I just loaded up uh, my latest like pack that I had, and I just sent it off to them like quick. Um, and I, to answer your question, I would say how to handle that is to have a very quick turnaround. Just like don't say anything stupid, don't say anything weird, don't do anything extra. Just do what they want. They want a pack, send a pack ASAP, and you know, just send that temp pack. Like that's it. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good uh that's a good piece of advice too. Cause I feel like people don't know what to send, how to send it, and then what to do when they're navigating through like email or text. So let's let's go with that first. Oliver, he texts you or he DMs you? He DM me. And he DMs you his email. Yeah. And then you're sending MP3s, you're going Dropbox link, or how are you kind of doing it? Oh, yeah, I'm putting a, a folder together of 10 MP3s, and I'm sending them a WeTransfer. WeTransfer, got it. And then what do you typically do when you first get the artist's number? Are you sending, like, a few beats a week random times, or how are you kind of going through that, especially in the early days? Now it's a little bit different for you, but... Yeah, in the early days... Um... In the early days, when I get an artist contact, they would just text me to like lock in. But back then, we we're still sending the email. I know now we can send phone to phone, uh -huh. but back then, I'll I'll just keep it short and sweet. Like Beck got you, and I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything like weird or extra. I just keep it at that, keep it professional. Now I'll just keep loading them up, bro. I'll just load up their email. Like I didn't want to be like a nuisance. I didn't want to be casted with a weird vibe i just wanted to be the guy that got in and got out yeah yeah that's so important too because people are always trying to like do some random shit like they're trying to be friends or post the post the shit that someone tapped in on their stories or all types of shits like i'm trying so hard to break that narrative of like only yeah. bad things can happen from screenshot and then post it on your story when someone taps in with you like only bad yeah. things can happen I get it. I know people are, you know, excited and everything, but like, man, you have to like, you have to stay locked in. Like, you know, that's, that's all I can say is just stay locked in. I know it's exciting and everything, but don't lose sight of like the goal. Like these, these artists don't care about us. <laughs> they don't, yeah. they just, they're, they need the hot beats. Give them the hot beats. Give them the hot beats. Yeah. Do your job. Thanks. Um, no, it's, uh, again, it's great to just kind of hear some of the other side. I actually worked in a call center too. So I felt that like crazy. I'll pull up three, three hour shifts a week, part-time job in college. I'm sitting there, I'm doing whatever, but working, like, like you said, you're sending off the beats or whatever. Oh, yeah. I took full on naps and sleeps <laughs> in the, on this. Thank God I had a cool uh, supervisor, but like, yeah, bro, I was, I was just there to get the, get the small check, man. Yeah. No, I had a cool supervisor too. She used to let me play music on the speakers and stuff. They'd be like, Carl, what do you got? You got some new new stuff to play or whatever. I'm like, so I was probably playing you back then, not even knowing it. <laughs> yeah, so you obviously got all that shit going on. Just a ton of stuff keeps coming out. Um, but like I said, as of recently, Laugh Now, Cry Later is, you know, biggest song of the last two years, damn near. I feel like I can't go anywhere without hearing it. Turn on the radio, that's what's on. Go to the Dodger game, that's what the batter's coming up to. Flick on the TV, that song's playing. Yeah, that's crazy about the Dodger game. I got to go. You know what I'm talking about or no? No, no. So like, I will I swear, start and line up nine hitters, like three or four of them at one point were using that. Crazy. Of it too. But everyone sees the song pop, sees the crazy video, Durant. Marshawn Lynch, Odell, Drewski, but I'm sure there's such a crazy backstory to how the song actually gets put together until that point. Like, what was the whole, like, process for that song? And, like, how did it, you know, really kind of, like, reach the finish line? Um, Thank you, by the way. Uh, the way it started was 
me and um, Roger Chahidi, we were um, working for the first time because um, Hip Boy used to bring Roger in to work on the Nas stuff um, together. And then at the same time, we're also working on a Big Sean's album, Detroit 2. So, um, you know, Hip Boy has a lot of crazy things going on. When you go to the studio, he has like 10, 11, 12 th different things going on. So, yeah, he had Roger there working with him on the Nas stuff. And then Big Sean pulls up and he's he wants to work. So we're working and stuff. We're just doing what we do. And then um, Hip Boy had already been spending 10, 11 hours before that working on whatever he was working on, more Nas stuff, his own stuff, uh, Sean's stuff, all types of stuff. So, you know, Sean gets there, we're doing what we do. And then, you know, um, Sean wants like some beats from scratch to, you know, write to. And so we make a few and then um, he wants one more. And Hip Boy's kind of like, you know, he's kind of done for the night. So he just like looks at me, he's like, you know, start something. I uh, pull up these drums and, you know, Roger's hooked up with his keyboard and his setup. And he starts playing the ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, on top of these drums that I had. And like everyone was feeling it. Like Hip Boy's like, yo, that's hard. And when I, when I hear my friends say that and people in the studio, like that's when I know like, oh shit, this is hard. Okay. Like, because I'm very insecure about my work. So I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know unless someone else like a hip boy or and Sean too is like, yo, this, this is hard. And um, once they said that, I was like, dance is kind of crazy. So, you know, Sean, he was like, yo, I'm gonna take this back and um, write to it. I wanna like just spend time writing. And you know, Sean's a very uh, introspective guy. He likes to like, you know, take his time on things. So I already knew it was going to take a minute before I heard anything back about it. And really, there was just so much stuff going on at the time. Like it was his album. He's still figuring out stuff. So in the meantime, we get hit with this. Uh, was it? Oh, yeah, it was already after COVID and we're still in the pandemic and stuff. In the meantime, there's like a lot of downtime, bro. So like. I seen one day, one night, uh, you know, Drake posted on his Insta story about he was, you know, he took like a selfie like this, like, yo, I'm 80%. He just put 80%. And I remember that. I was just like, oh, shit, let me like send over something so, you know, I could just like feel like I tried mm -hmm. um, and so that I could go to sleep, like with a clear conscience that night. And, you know, I sent uh, that beat along with like two or three other beats to Noel. And, you know, I just sent them off, didn't think nothing else of it. And I saw that Noel opened the email. I was like, cool, I did what I could. And then like, you know, a few minutes later, he shoots me a text and he's just like, yo. And I replied like super fast. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo what up? And he was like, we need the files to that one beat. Um, he named the beat. And I, you know, ran straight to my laptop, tracked it out um and yeah bro I just sent it off and then really I kind of forgot about it after that because like a month or I think two months that went by before it came out and I was thinking about it but I have so much PTSD like in the music industry that like I try not to like get my expectations up um so I stopped thinking about it like I forced myself not to think about it I would even listen to the beat by myself and I'd be like there's no way it was kind of weird the beat sounded kind of weird the way it drops and stuff I was like, there's no way someone can make a song out of this. Like, no way. So I just forgot about it, bro. And then um, I'm at dinner. Ironically, it was party one night. Um, and it was just kind of like a, a lackluster night. We're just at dinner. You know, I'm kind of like tuned out. Like my mind was somewhere else. But I was on my phone. And then like, I don't get any social media uh, notifications. But like a, a Toronto number had texted me, sent me a link and was like, yo, this is the password. And I was like, who's this? And it just wrote back the boy. And I was like, bet. So I just, uh, 
you know, like everyone was like doing their own thing at the dinner table. I just got up and I just went to my car and I looked at whatever the link was. I seen all this Nike stuff. Then I heard the bump, bump, bump. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, what's going on? Then I, I hear Drake starts, you know, he starts singing and stuff. I'm like, I was just going crazy. Like, wow. And I was just confused. And I had to ask him, like, you know, what is this? Is this like, is this going on your album? Or what is this? He's like, yo, this is my single. And I was like, say less. Let's go. Like, I, I just, I just went home, bro. I just drove my ass home. <laughs> It's insane. Yeah, there's so there's always so many like twists and turns to it, but it's crazy. And I think you you kind of in the right mindset too, with just not getting your hopes up for certain shit. Because I see people get so attached to something and start calling everybody and trying to tell them they got this on the way or that on the way. But that's the thing; it's really not out until it's out. Um, man, 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 oh man, I have horror stories. <laughs> paperwork up, Carter Five placements, paperwork, everything never came out so it's not out until it's out that's for sure listen man i have horror stories bro (laughs) so i want to ask this too a lot of people get put in this position where and this is so different from drake but you brought it up so it is something interesting to kind of think about the the like quote unquote i don't say it personally because i think it's all relationship based but like the golden rule of don't send files until the paperwork's done and payment and things like that it sounds like you didn't wait for any of that you sent it through as soon as they wanted it obviously but like (laughs) what do you think to like up and coming people with different because some up and coming artists will probably try to finesse you then there's those things like that i mean my thing is always like if it seems too good to be true it probably is so try to do it in a certain way but what would your advice to be to people like that on those kind of instances? Okay. So if a Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick, uh, Kanye, Weekend, I think you see where I'm going with this, like a big song, Nicki Minaj, big artist says, send the files. You better say bet and send the files. Like, I understand all the, you know, like you got to get the business sorted out and, you know, you got to be careful. And even just on a, on a general basis, send those files, man, because it can all get worked out. It's all going to get worked out. And if at the very end, if they still want to like fuck you over, that's on them. Like, you know, like it all could get sorted out at the end of the day, as long as you have an attorney and someone, you know, that could handle it in a professional way. Um, send those files, man, because you don't want to block your blessings. Um, it you could say the you you could say one thing that could just block your entire blessing, like because you know, like the artists and their team and stuff, like they want to make sure you're not crazy too. Like you know, like they want to make sure you're like workable and like they want to know, like yo, this guy's not gonna like try to like fucking go to the bank with this you know like they want to know like oh this is a normal person let's go like we're good we're okay we don't have anything to worry about absolutely don't get in your own way and make sure you don't have anybody around you that's making you get in your own way like I always say the producer world's so interesting because so many of these people are just like producer flippers like they just bring them try to get them the biggest publishing situation with the biggest advance regardless of retention period lifetime retention of the copyright etc and just get their 10 percent. boom move on to the next whatever and that happens with like you said they want to make sure you're not just going to the bank like you know you can play hardball or whatever and be super difficult or have your manager do it and maybe you get 10k for the beat instead of three or something that person's never going to work with you again and that's a super yeah. block listen listen i had a early on in the game like with that PMD2 project, like I had this like manager, I don't even remember his name. I didn't even know him well at all. I don't even know why he was like my manager. But like, he tried to ask for like a lot of money for the beat. And they basically came back and said, this is a mixtape. We're not even gonna pay for this beat. And he told me, and he just seemed so flustered. And I just was like, yo, I don't give a fuck. Make it go through. Yes, agree. We agreed, and, like, the next day, the manager, like, quit on me. He was like, I can't do this. And I was like, 
thank God, get out of my like, get out of my like life because like that's not what I'm on. I've never, I've never been a, uh, and I think this is a part of me that kind of like um, is responsible for like some of the success. Like I've never been money driven like that, bro. I've never been like seen dollar signs when I've looked at like anything at all. Yeah. And most people who operate that way always seem to win. And it's interesting too, because there's a lot of up and coming producers who have those managers like that, that it's just some random guy that DM'd him on Instagram that has a picture of a placement. And now, you know, you put management them in your bio, but also like, it's tough. Cause on one hand, there's no like guide to like the music industry type of things. But when it comes to a situation like that, people know like what seems right and what doesn't like not getting paid for something that might maybe not seem right. But if it's an artist you super fuck with and it's a mixtape and there's no budget to it, whatever, you know that you can decide that that's okay. And like, you know, it'll end up helping you in other ways. Yeah. And I think you just have to realize the opportunity before you. It's like, yo, this could lead to other things. Like you should want to do this for free. A hundred percent. Um, but yeah, looking more into to present day, obviously, you know, the Roddy Rich album drop is is right, am, right among us. We got, you know, kind of a countdown going on right now. You obviously got some work on that. What's it like working with him and how did that kind of happen with you two locking in? Man, Roddy is, uh, he's dope as hell. He's like one of my favorite artists and he's low-key like extended family because uh, him and Hip Boy locked in early, like, like a few years ago, they had did uh, Racks in the Middle with Nip. Mm -hmm. You know, they won a Grammy together. And that was, like, a little after um, he came on the scene, like, you know, with Die Young, that whole wave. And, you know, he started coming to the studio. Uh, him and Hip Boy had this relationship early on. And, you know, I was always there. So we did a lot of work. We've done a lot of work people don't even know about. Like, we've made, we've made like, I've had to make beats from scratch in front of him. He's even collaborated on some beats with us. Like, we um, have just spent a lot of time in the studio together. And um, shouts to Kifa, too. He'll be there all the time. So in between that time, you know, they're doing all this work. And then I'm doing my own thing, too. You know, I'm, I'm getting, like, I'm, he's working with Future. I'm also working with Future at the time. Because Future used to have a, have a, a room right across from ours. So we used to see Future like walking the hallways and you know that's how we met Roddy. Roddy uh went to go work with Future and then he bumped into Hip Boy and of course when you run into Hip Boy you know see what's going on mm -hmm. and so that's how that happened so like you know like um all these other things come about you know like bigger records like you know the Laugh Now has happened and you know Kipa just tapped back in with me um I, I fuck with Kipa super super heavy he's, he's one of the dope Dan R's that I love in this game tap back in with me um you know was asking for packs and even for his first album me and hip boy had a song that was supposed to be on his first album um but like the day of the album dropping i got that phone call and was like yo you know you could imagine what that phone call is like it's like it's not a good phone call and you know you got to take that on the chin and yeah bro like we've known him for a minute and like i would say he's like low-key extended fan yeah on one hand though the call is got some respect to it then no call at all so I yeah guess kind of sure. lining there but it's gonna be a crazy drop I ha i'm so curious to see what it does first week not that numbers really matter but right he's just absolutely crush um you know, looking at looking at the rest of closing out the year and into 2022, what are some things on the plate for GRI? Things you're excited about? Things you've been working on? Yeah, um, I'm excited for. Um, um, I've been monitoring this like day to day. Um, uh, loyal to a fault, Big Sean. That's climbing up the charts right now. It's going to enter top ten urban. I would say in the next week. Um, top 20 rhythmic in the next week too. I'm excited about that. It has a lot of potential, you know, this Roddy uh, album. And then also, um, you know, 2022, I'm like really going to focus on establishing me and my brand 
Um, I'm going to put out a project. I have a single coming out, just sorting it through and cooking new stuff also. Um, and, you know, I just have other records that I'm excited about, but more so Brandon uh, G-Ride. G-Ride got me. That's my that's my slogan. And, you know, just putting myself out there more as a, you know, you know, producers these days um, were uh, considered artists. Considered artists. So, like, I really want to, like, step into that. Definitely. Um. But yeah, we're we're ready for the project. I was gonna, I don't know if it was top secret, but I was gonna mention it because I've been hearing some rumblings about you know the big G Rai project coming out. Uh G -Rai got me volume one. Volume one. Are you kind of going into that like the creative process of that a little differently that it's your own or kind of just same old building it out? Man, no, I'm just uh literally just working, just working linking up with as many artists as I can, doing as much as I can, and just trying to have more of a organic, uh, you know, organic approach to it. You know, wh whoever I'm locking in with, whoever I fuck with, and whoever fucks with me, um, and will lend their talents, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fucking with it. Hell yeah. I'm gonna start floating some little ideas your way. There might be a couple good up and coming guys you gotta lock in with. And that too, I, I definitely want to work with, uh, you know, the, the new up and coming, the, the, I want to work with the juice world before the, the juice world, you know? Yeah, most definitely. But we appreciate it so much. I know you got 9,000 sessions you got to be at, but you, you took some time to, to chill with us. So I appreciate it like crazy. Um, we got to end it with this too. We started it with the drip. I got to ask you for a favor. You Let's got go. a crazy arsenal of sunglasses, too. I'm trying to get myself in the game. <laughs> What's the brand I got to go with? And, and what do I got to get? What's the first, like, entry level? I think I want some big shit, but you Man. crush with sunglasses. These, by the way, I lose these all the time. But these, <laughs> you can't go wrong with these. These are the marble gray ones. These are the uh, millionaires. But millionaires. really, bro, uh, I also like those other Louis ones, those big ones with the, with the diamond. Those are classic. But really, I would say uh, Balenciaga. It just came out with some fire shades, bro. They have the uh, the B on the side. They're crazy. Oh, and off white. Rest in peace, Virgil. Man, they have a classic pair too with the with the arrows right here. I know. I would say if if you're not gonna go Louis, I would definitely either go Balenciaga or can't go wrong with those off whites. Yeah, definitely. I gotta get in the game, man. Everyone's gonna start seeing. Me and G-Rod posted up crazy <laughs> coming next level. Twin shit. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, we appreciate it big time. The producer room powered by producer culture. Everyone, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, comment who you want to see next. Shit, you just might get it. This is the biggest one yet. We appreciate it big time, man. Man, appreciate you too, bro.